Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to a video discussing the Drake Cutlass. Even though 3.0 is delayed, the silver lining is that we have more time to plan for the future. We know that the updated Cutlass is coming out with the release of 3.0 and I think this looks like an awesome ship. So, does the new Cutlass dethrone the current $65 Avenger Titan package as the best starter ship in spite of its current game package of $115? It's not my goal today to get new citizens to pay more for their game. I still believe that people should be told to get the most basic package, become familiar with the game, and then decide in the future if an upgrade makes sense. So why then would it be okay to suggest a cut list to a brand new citizen over a cheaper pledge? Let's find out. In December of last year I did a video called The History of the Drake Cutlass in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It's linked up right now if you wanted to know more about the history of this ship and its developmental issues. Let's just summarize by saying the Cutlass had a very rocky start. The new Cutlass seems to be the classic jack of all trades and master of none. It's not a fighter, but it can certainly defend itself. It's not a dedicated explorer, but its size and features won't stop you from sightseeing. It's not a dedicated cargo ship, but its holds are significant. It's a perfect multi-crew ship that lets you take a friend along. But the most important feature that stands out to me is that I see this being a truly solo capable ship. When you combine all of these factors, I think it comes out on top. I need to mention that there are other 2 plus seat ships such as the Reliant and the Freelancer. The Reliant is a very good value option. It's cheaper and smaller, but to me offers much less in the way of gameplay options because it can't carry a speeder. The Freelancers are currently more expensive and more focused on pure cargo running. They have the space to carry speeders, but the cockpit view is just too bust for me and it's a major detractor. I also expect it to fly more bus-like as well. I mentioned before that the key reason I'm here today is a price jump. With the re-release of the Cutlass, the community is expecting one. Usually the new reworked ships are bigger and the new price scales with the size and capability. The new Cutlass is much larger and as I said, it's in a bit of a sweet spot. It's my personal belief that the entire line of Cutlass ships will increase by $50. That makes the standalone black $150, the red $175, and the blue a $200 pledge. We were told that the perk of being an early backer and tester is that the prices are going to increase as we get closer to launch. I'm canvassing my friends, showing them what's coming and finding out if they're interested in getting on board. The community will grow as more people see the game. In the past I hesitated to recruit new people because of the limited functionality and gameplay options. I think that 3.0 is now the time where that's no longer the case. Now here's an idea for yourself if you're on the fence. Consider spending $10 to tuck away a Gladius to Cutlass CCU for later. You can always melt it in the future, but it'll let you keep the better price even after 3.0 launches. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this topic and the channel's no bullshit approach. If you got something out of this video, please help me by linking it to a friend. Please remember to recruit with a code. I strongly recommend using the Reddit code randomizer linked in the description. You can also use your own code or friends. Please stay tuned as I'm going to tear through topics as they come out to keep you informed. Subscribe to the other members of Redacted with the links in the description. We each offer our unique perspective and there's no such thing as too much diversity. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.